بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Oh Allah, help us learn what is beneficial to us. Help us benefit from what you have enabled us to learn and increase our knowledge. Alhamdulillah, today we are beginning our discussion about Irab, which is one of the most important properties of noun or ism. Please watch the next few lessons on Irab related to Quranic Arabic. When it comes to Quranic Arabic, there is hardly any difference of opinion that Irab must be taken very seriously, particularly if you are a non-native Arabic speaker. Let's look at a scenario how one sentence in Arabic without Irab or any haraka can be extremely difficult to interpret its meaning. But first of all, what is Irab? The Irab of a noun points to the specific grammatical role it has in a sentence. For example, in verbal sentence, the word takes the irab of rafa, if identified as the subject, while a word in the nasab form is identified as the direct object of the verb. Irab is an Arabic term for the system of suffixes in nouns, adjectives or verb form of classical Arabic to mark grammatical case. These suffixes are written in fully vocalized Arabic texts, notably the Quran or texts written for children or Arabic learners, and they are articulated when a text is formally read aloud. But they do not survive in any spoken dialect of Arabic. In Quranic Arabic, it is accepted that Nahu is the soul of Arabic, and Irab is the soul of Nahu. Let's look at a particular sentence. Ahmadu Akramu an Nasi. Ahmadu Akramu Nasi. Okay, it will give a meaning, however, it may not be right because there are seven examples using the same three letters making a sentence with seven different meanings. Let's look at example one. Ahmadu Akramun Nasi. Here the meaning is Ahmad is the most honorable of all people. Let's look at example two. Ahmadu Akraman Nasa. Ahmad honored the people. This is different to example one. Let's look at example three. Ahmudu Akraman Nasi. I praise the most honorable of the people. How is it different in the example four? Ahmadu Akraman Nasi. O Ahmed, honor the people. Look at example five. Ahmada Akraman Nasu. The people honored Ahmad. Example six. Ahamida Akramun Nasi, did he praise the most honorable of the people? And finally, example seven. Ahumida Akramun Nasi, was the most honorable of the people praised? So you can see the difficulties to read and have the correct meaning if the Irab is not understood and identified to interpret the correct meaning. Inshallah, if you pay full attention in the next series of several lessons, you will be able to understand Irab completely. Inshallah, we are going to talk about Irab, the status, uh, which is one of the properties of an ism. As we know, there are four properties of ism. To remember, we call it I-T-N-G. I means Irab or status. T means type of noun, whether it is definite or indefinite noun. N means number. And finally, G means gender. So like everything else, status has also got three properties. What is this Iraq? What is the status? 
it will explain in, in a minute. Then types of Arab, what type of Arab it is, and how to also tell the status of the Arab in an Islam. There are examples here. Uh, there are three sentences, as you can see. Ahmed is my friend. It is underlined. And you can see Ahmed is playing a particular role here. It is the doer. It is the subject of that sentence. It is, it is the subject. It is the doer. Now look at next example. Ali hate Ahmed. Ahmed is actually an object here. Ahmed is, as you know, object is called maful, maful e bihi. So Ahmed is playing the role, role of uh, maful, an object here. But the first one was, it was the fa'il here. Ahmed is my friend. Ahmed is doer here. In the second example, Ahmed is an object. Ali is hitting Ahmed. Who is he hitting? Ahmed. Okay. Next example is, I went to Ahmed's house. Look at the role of Ahmed here. Ahmed is playing the role of the possessor here, which is Mudafilaihi. House is the possessed. So you can see the three role of Ahmed in three different sentences are totally different. First one is Fail, second one is Maful, third one is Mudafilaihi Uite Kasra, you understand, you remember that. Ira will be jar status, which is Kasra at the end of that. Let's look at some more examples. Example two, I ate too much chocolate. So this means I is the doer. It will be Marfu state. It will be explained in a minute. Rafa state, they're saying. Uh, in short, Marfu is called Rafa. Mansub is called nasub in short, and uh, majrur is called jar status. So I ate too much chocolate. I is the marfu state, and it is the doer here. My tooth was hurting. So you can see there is an element of mudaf mudafilai here. My tooth, tooth is possessed by me. So that me will have a rub. Kasra at the end, as you know, as a mudafi, all mudafilah, he will have kasra at the end. Okay. And the last one is the doctor gave me a filling. It means the doctor is the file here, but me is the maful, maful e bihi. How would you identify? Because the meaning says doctor gave it to whom? The doctor gave the filling to whom? To me, me, whom? That's the answer. So it's maful e bihi. So you can see I my and me they are playing three different roles here so you can see there are three forms of uh, Arab one is Rafa uh, the second one is Nasab and third one is Jar Rafa is a shortened version of Marfu and Nasab is the shortened version of Mansub and Jar is the shortened version of Majru Rafa as we showed the example before Rafa is always playing the role of the doer Fa'il in English the doer is called nominative case. Then Nasab is playing the role of Mafud Bihi or the object. Okay? Who, what, when this is expressed in that way. And the English name of uh, Nasab or Mansub state is called accusative case. Jar is the last form of Arab. It means it will have Kasra on the last letter of the word. And uh, you know there are two examples. It can be mudaf mudaf ilaihi with a kasra jar state, or just min Allahi. For example, the Allahi is the uh, majrur and min is jar. Jar majrur will ha will make this uh, second noun uh, in kasra state. And in English, this is called genitive case. So let's talk about nominative case in more details. Ism is in rougher status, in doer status, uh, in, as a file, when it is the doer of the action. So remember the word um, doer of the action. And Ism by default is in rougher state, by default. This is naturally in marfu state or rougher state. 
uh, unless there is a reason it to be any of the other two forms. When an ism is in rougher state, we label it as marfu'un, marfu'un, in short, rafa. Example, Ali is playing ticket, uh, cricket. Who is playing? Ali is playing. In the above sentence, Ali is in rafa status because he is, he is the doer. So it will be labeled as marfu'un. Khalaqallahu adama. Allah created Adam. In the above example, you can see Allahu is the doer of action. So it will be in rougher status. Allahu is in rougher status and labeled as marfu'un. Let's talk about number two forms of Arab, which is nasab or mansub, uh, accusative case. If ism is not the doer of the action, rather it is the recipient or details of the action. Whenever an ism is in nasab state, we label it as mansubun. Example, Ali ate apple. In the above, above example, if you ask the question, what did Ali eat? The answer is apple. So that is object. That is mafule bihi and it will appear in mansub state or nasab state. Quranic example of nasab. Adama. In this sentence, Adama is the recipient or detail of the action of creation. So it will be in Nasab state and we'll label it as Mansub. Let's talk about the third form, which is genitive case or Jar. If we have two ism side by side and one ism possesses the other, the possessor will be in Jar state or the one which comes after of will be in jar status. The ism which comes after preposition is always in jar. Ism in jar status is labeled as majrurun. Examples of jar. Hassan's book. In the above phrase, Hassan is the one which possesses the book. So Hassan will be in jar status. So it is labeled as majrurun. Another way of saying the same phrase is book of Hassan. Ism which comes after of will be in jar state. In the above phrase, the ism Hassan came after of. So we will say ism Hassan is in jar. The only other situation of ism in jar status is if it comes after a preposition. Let's look at a Quranic example of Harfizar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, starting in the name of Allah. In the above phrase, preposition B came before ism, which is a noun, and Harfizar B made the noun Kasra, which is jar status, also labeled as Majrurun. So, Alhamdulillah, we have discussed the three forms of status and its example. Um, if it is not clear, Please go back to the whole video again and again with the examples, make some notes and try to understand because that will be used everywhere and we must identify their status in Arab. The status of Arab we must understand whether they are in nominative case which is Rafa or Marfu or if it is accusative case in Nasab or Mansub state, whether it is genitive case in Jar form. Uh, which is majroor. So I hope you found it helpful. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk